Welcome to another episode of Mike Out. This episode is about my five points of survival, which is an aid memoir both during and when preparing for a potential disaster or survival situation. Point number one is uh, first aid first. I believe it is uh, important to your own safety to establish yourself as a rescuer of yourself rather than a victim as early as possible. Science has shown that most of us act semi-automatically or inefficiently during or immediately following the disaster's impact phase. We fall back on routine and what we do on a daily basis. Training can help establish that routine and help break out of potential inappropriate behavior. That's why survival training is a proven way to increase your chances of survival. But survival training is usually expensive and very time consuming. While first aid or CPR training is inexpensive and easily acquired where you are encouraged to act according to a protocol. Protocols and checklists are important and help us do the right thing during and following the impact phase. Which is why my two first points are procedural in nature. So if you don't have uh, fresh first aid or CPR training, get it soon. Point number two is uh, STOP, where STOP stands for Stop, Think, Orient and Plan. During the impact phase of a disaster, you probably don't think super rationally and your actions reflect your training or day-to-day life. But as soon as you are able to have rational thoughts, it is important not to get overwhelmed. Grasping the overall picture of the situation, establish purpose and prioritize tasks are good ways to steer away from psychological paralysis, apathy and maybe even denial. Thinking about the STOP acronym can help you give room for rational thinking and sizing up the situation. Remember to train these two uh, points often. They are easy enough to incorporate into your daily life. Point number three is the rule of threes. A lot of stuff come in threes. Uh, Three of something is uh, internationally recognized as a distress call and as a generalization we survive three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without uh, water and three weeks without food. And you need about three liters of water per day. It all depends on the environment, of course. Uh, So this is a gross generalization. But the third point is designed to help you remember some of the priorities uh, of human physiology. Point number four is hash. And hash consists of four tasks in a disaster or survival situation. Hash stands for heat, alert, shelter and hydrate. Heat is not uh, necessarily fire but any means to preserve optimal body temperature. Uh, Alert is by some means telling authorities or your designated rescuers that you are in distress. Shelter is obviously to shelter yourself from the environment and or threat whether it's uh, the cold, rain, snow, heat of the sun or man-made threats. Dehydration quickly deteriorates both physical and uh, mental performance, which is why hydrate is uh, one of the tasks. It is important to keep busy and always improve the situation. And once first aid is covered, work should go towards these important tasks, whether you stay put and wait for rescuers to arrive or whether you try to make it out on your own. Point number five is five items to bring before disaster strikes, memorized by the phrase, keep calm to win, fight on. It's both a phrase to help memorize which items to bring and an encouragement not to be overwhelmed and to never give up. This is a preparedness or readiness step, so it's something you have to prepare before you are in a disaster. For everyday carry, Five items are not very many and I had to compromise a lot. Of course bringing as much as possible given the situation is great. But if highly limited then my list is uh, knife and compass, keep calm, KC, tourniquet and whistle, to win, TW, 
fire steel or other alternative which is the final fight on. These items are obviously more appropriate in the outdoors uh, rather than in an urban disaster scenario. It does not include other items I think are almost equally as important like water filtration unit, a pot and a flashlight. Like I said it's, it's a compromise. However, many times it is easier to improvise these items rather than the five on my list. The usefulness of a knife uh, needs no further explanation, I believe, but many times you cannot carry a knife for legal reasons or other reasons. Uh, so maybe a multi-tool or a Swiss army knife is an alternative and when you cannot ca even carry that, maybe a medical shear or some kind of scissor is a, is a good alternative. A compass is uh, obviously excellent for moving from point A to point B, but also helps with grasping an overall picture of the situation and adds valuable planning intel, whether it's in a forest, uh, at sea, or in an urban environment, you know your directions and you can plan accordingly. And ho hopefully it also helps with uh, rational thinking in a way. First aid or only a tourniquet. If I had to choose, which is what the list is all about, I would choose a tourniquet. Most first aid kits uh, do not include tourniquets and you need it very accessible if you need it. Watch my tourniquet video for some of the arguments to carry one. A whistle is heard a lot better and further than, than your voice, uh, so it's an excellent device to help get the attention of rescuers. It usually doesn't break down uh, by using it, unlike your voice. And it's a lot easier to blow in uh, a whistle than to scream, meaning you can do it for longer and more often. But please note that a whistle is not an emergency communication device. Don't expect someone to pursue the signal, even if they hear it. A whistle should be seen as a manual way to get the attention of those who are already out looking for you. Or get the attention of members of your group if you get separated and you don't have uh, working radio comms, for example. A fire seal or something similar may not be the highest priority in many situations, but outdoors uh, on land in a cold environment like uh, where I live, it could obviously be life-saving, which is why it's on my list. A fire also supports most of the four tasks the hash mentioned earlier. Finally, survivor training is a proven way to perform well during both uh, minor incidents or potential survival situations as well as the real deal disaster. So get some training and practice as often as possible. That's it for this episode of Mike Out. Thanks for watching and uh, please thumbs up, comment and subscribe if you like this video. And remember, keep calm to win, fight on. This is Mike, out.